Hello, hello. Uh, thank you for joining again. I am Kristen Webb of the Greater You Leadership Series. I am your leadership enthusiast. I like to call myself that. And this is Women Leaders Walk the Talk. I'm so excited about tonight. Um, it's still love month. I want to make sure I point that out. It is February. It is love month. We should be loving on ourselves and everybody around us. And we really should be doing it every day of the year. But we'll focus on February uh, being the month that we can actually focus in on that. Um, I, when I think about February, I think about the love between people, significant others. But I also think about self-love. Um, mm -hmm the self-love that's built from our self-awareness. And tonight, so we're gonna kind of talk a little bit about self-love. Um, a little fun fact about myself is that I used to be a tomboy, believe it or not. And somehow I now have a great appreciation for fashion, hair, and makeup, and having them all collectively complement my daily journey in leadership. I love a coordinated pump or a popping accessory, uh, complimentary makeup and fly hair to top it all off. I think that is very, very important. So, and that's just to me, that's what, that's what works for me and gets my blood going. Um, and it's not about being fashionable so much as it is about showing confidence. And of course that confidence I think is important that it's coming from the inside first and it's displayed externally, right? Um, and so when we talk about that display, it's absolutely different for every single person. Uh, one of the ladies on the call tonight on the um, this panel, she'll tell you that everybody has a different style, right? Um, and so the important thing is whatever your style is, as you're on your leadership journey, is that you're making sure that it's, it's showing the confidence that you have internally and exuded outside. So whatever your style is, is rooted in our level of self-awareness and self-love, and it becomes the way we manage our self-care. So tonight we're going to also talk a little bit about self-care. We'll touch on that a bit. So three focuses tonight, if you heard me, is self-awareness, self-love, and self-care. And we're going to take those three focuses and we're going to stir them up with beauty, fashion, and leadership tonight. So tonight I brought my um, I brought my makeup brushes. Yes. Don't worry, I'm going to clean them later. I did, I did my makeup. So I brought my makeup brushes. I'm not going to market anybody in particular, but I got my, my palette. Um, and I wore one of my fave outfits that I hope... Uh, Miss Dickerson, Miss Sojo approves of. Um, and I also brought some leaders, female leaders that rock their respective industries in beauty and fashion. So with that, let me introduce my fly, talented, and trailblazing panelists. We have Rachel Sojo with Golden Style Consulting. We have Sheila Guerrero with CIDY, Can I Do Your Makeup? And we have Trisha Lynn with Trisha Lynn Artistry. So hello, ladies. Hi. <laughs> um, I want to make sure I shut up right now. So I want to stop and just allow you all to kind of introduce yourselves uh, really quickly, just whatever you'd like to share about yourself. What do you do? That kind of thing. And then we'll go from there. So no particular order. Jump right in. I'll go first. So like you said, my name is Trisha of Trisha Lynn Artistry, but a little bit about myself. I am a wife, a mother of two children, and I am transitioning back into freelance artistry. My background um, is in social work, actually. And I'm not, like you said, helping people and really getting to, uh, you know, work with people is something that I always thought I wanted to do. And then I also have love for makeup. So basically, those two things joined together. I've worked for MAC um, Cosmetics in a retail management position and also Anastasia Beverly Hills in the account management position for the Memphis, um, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana territories. So I was able to basically touch so many lives in doing just makeup. And I actually found that that is my first love and that is what I love to do is help people. And by doing that, I'm able to, you know, reach as many people as I can. Love it, love it. First loves, passion, purpose. Yes. I love it, I love it, yes. I love it. All right, thank you, Trish. Who else we got? Um, I will next. My name is Sheila Guerrero. I'm perfectly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, DY, can I do your makeup? And that's actually not a question, but it's a statement of fact. My background is broadcast news. That was my, I would say, first love, uh, broadcast news. And then I realized what the gift was and what, or what the gift was, and that is makeup. And it wasn't until I realized that doing makeup was a gift, that is when I noticed God started opening doors 
I mean, doors that I could not even fathom 10 years ago. But um, I've been doing this since 2007. I've had City Makeup since 2007. I've toured on, I've toured Wicked, the, one of the largest plays in, in the Broadway world. I toured Wicked doing special effects makeup. Of course, I love beautifying people, making people get that confidence back. But I also love making people, you know this, Kristen, <laughs> look dead, <laughs> prepping, and like yes. their falling off, and their eyes are popping out of their heads, and their skulls are put, popped open. That's what I really love to do, special effects makeup. So I love that. Um, I am single. I am uh, no children. And um, God is moving in my direction. He's leaning in my direction at this point in my life. So I'm thankful. Awesome, awesome. I love it. And yes, when we talk about gory makeup, <laughs> you are definitely like a heavy hitter when it comes to special effects. And I really admire that um, to be able to branch off into that, that part of makeup. So absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. All right, Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel Sojo. I am um, a fashion strategist. Most people know it as a uh, fashion stylist, but for me, it's more of a strategic uh, strategy approach um, to what I do. Um, I own a consulting business called Golden Style Consulting, where we work with our clients to help them um, just achieve like their image vision. What do they want to portray? Uh, we work with a lot of brands, entrepreneurs, or I work with a lot of brands, entrepreneurs. Um, you know, just how, how they want to convey their messaging to their clients. Mm -hmm. um, I have been in the industry going on five years. I'm an attorney by trade. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, Talk about the switch up. <laughs> Talk about the switch up. But the important thing is I did switch it up. Um, and so, um, what else is there to say about me? Um, I'm a mom. I have a daughter. She's going to have um, a husband. We're in the middle of moving right now. So life is crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've always loved fashion, style. Um, anybody you ask about me, I've just been putting together outfits since I was a kid. Right. And right. I've always had a love for fashion. Ended up going to law school. After law school, um, I um, went into tax law, real estate law here in Chicago, and um, developed high blood pressure. And so, because um, just the job was so stressful. And mm -hmm. so my husband and I sat down and had a conversation. He was like, look, let's do what make you happy because I'm trying to have you here for a long time. So anyway, <laughs> that kind of pushed me on over into starting this career. And um, God has really been good. <laughs> so I'll just leave yes. this at and you have been killing it and all of you all are killing it and that's why I got y'all on tonight um, because for those who are interested in you know fashion and beauty I think it'll be great that they hear that they've even heard your journeys like how did you get where you are today um, the future is bright I don't even have to ask where you're going because we're going to be following you and we're going to be watching um, but the other part is and I think this is absolutely true um, for all human beings is that we're all leaders whether we're leading ourselves individually or leading you know teams and leading vision for companies or whatever the case is so definitely so glad to have each of you on um, with your experience and your background. And so we're going to jump right in. The first thing I always like to ask, um, you've probably heard of the five second rule, right? You have five seconds to uh, eat some, pick something up off the floor and eat before somebody looks at you sideways. Uh, but we're going to do the three second rule. During three seconds, I want you to give me one word that you use to describe leadership. So um, one, um, two, three. Okay. What did you say, Sheila? Onward. Onward. Mm. And the reason why I say that, no matter what you're going through, just keep going. Mm. Don't mm. get stuck in the... Keep going. So if it's good, if it's bad, keep going. Leadership is about being a trailblazer. And if you have to trailblaze that trail alone, continue doing that on your onward journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. So onward, what else we got? So I have to go with the first word that popped in my mind, and, and that is compassion. Um, I know there's not a word that everyone always associates with leadership, mm -hmm. but I feel, and I, not, I know that when you have a team and you show them compassion and you work with them and you, uh, you know, you try to do the best work riding alongside them, it, pr it produces the best results. Um, so compassion starts there first and then everything else to me, um, 
showing them how to do their jobs or showing them, you know, just really uh, making sure that they are, feel well prepared to move to the le next level is what I think is going to be, you know, great. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we got onward. We got compassion. Let's see what the rest of the picture looks like, Rachel. <laughs> uh, for me, it's boldness. Mm. Um, I think, you know, leadership requires boldness. I don't think everybody's boldness looks the same. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. I think you can look different ways. Um, it can be presented different ways. Mm -hmm. I just think you have to have a little like boldness, you know, mm -hmm. um, to to be a leader, to be an influencer, or you know, because you have to set the pack. You know, absolutely. Show us where we're going. Absolutely. And it makes me think about, you know, what Sheila mentioned when we talk about moving onward, like you said, trailblazing, sometimes trailblazing by yourself, like you got to be pretty darn bold yeah, uh, yeah. to be willing to be out there by yourself. And if you're a leader, it's absolutely going to be an experience. You're going to experience that at some point. So I love mm -hmm. the way we're matching in that. And then definitely with compassion, being able to, uh, and I like to say compassion or empathetic, uh, those things kind of falling together, making sure that you're using that when you're working with a team that you're directly leading or even when we talk about the beauty and fashion industry, you may go in just as the, you know, the person that's doing the fashion for the day, but you got a photographer on set, you got the artists themselves, you know, um, or if you're doing the makeup, so there is more than just the team that's reporting to you. Sometimes it's like, how do we collaborate? How do you lead a collaboration in a, in a good way? So I love right. that. I love that. So like I mentioned, it is Love Month. Um, February 14th looked a little different for me this year, but that's okay. Uh, it is Love Month. And um, again, we think about self, I think about self-love, I think about self-care and self-awareness. So what can you share on how beauty and fashion correlate with confidence? Because that's what I was saying earlier. I was saying that to me, when you have the right level of confidence as you move into your journey of leadership or continue it, um, you know, you're able to, I know when I, I feel like I look good, my day is even better. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, when I have on what I feel like is really um, pulling yeah. me all together, the full package or whatever that is, I really feel complete and ready and more confident than just what is sitting on the inside. So how do you all feel like beauty and fashion tie in or correlate with leadership or confidence? Yeah. So definitely um, how you look a lot of times affect how you work or how you, you know, present yourself or uh, what you do during do during your day. Especially now, like, a lot of you ladies are entrepreneurs. So just getting up in the day, you know, brushing your hair, putting on your, you know, your favorite lipstick, putting on your favorite pair, you know, of pumps really creates an environment for you to be successful and succeed throughout the day. Um, I think that that, just sets the tone for everything. Um, even if, like I said, if it's something small, it could be, oh, my favorite bracelet, you know, I have on, or my favorite nail polish, whatever it is that makes you feel beautiful and makes you feel like you want to go out and, you know, then conquer the world and do whatever you need to do, knock <laughs> down those lists. It's, you know, it's, it's, it creates, it sets the tone for everything, I believe, for sure. I agree. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I think just, for me, image is everything, and um, I, I'm one of those, like, fashion styles that believe it starts with the woman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, if we're on production and set, and we're doing a total thing, you know, that's one thing, but if I'm working with somebody through their wardrobe or whatever, um, I like to know, you know, who are you and what are your goals, mm -hmm. and then we style according to that, and so... She feels confident because she's wearing the attire that's getting her to her goals. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Whether that be whatever. You know, I like to say I style, I can style my woman for wherever she's going. <laughs> she's getting married. <laughs> she's going out to the beach. She's going to the boardroom. She's, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And so mm -hmm. it's when we set those goals or when we, you know, because usually they already have them. It's when we uh, pinpoint them. Hmm. and say what it is and then say okay what makes you feel your best so if she looks she loves red like Sheila has on a red hat you know what I'm saying so we start putting a little red on her wardrobe we got a red and so she feels confident in her attire as she's achieving her goals like you know what I'm saying so I follow yeah yeah so for mm -hmm. me image and <clears throat> confidence it, it connects up so much. And also, really, I remember after I, when I first uh, gave birth to my daughter, 
and you know I was just like struggling like just trying to like look good and all this stuff I would put on some red lipstick and honey change your life you could yeah. just walking up in the store change your life it's like you know and I may be looking like whatever but honey a pop and I was just like wow like, you know what I'm saying? Something that simple mm-hmm. during that postpartum trying to take care of my da- red, fancy red lipstick. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Go get you some, audience. You just heard that. Go get you some red lips. <laughs> you know, so to motivate you, you through the day. I always say that red lipstick is my superpower. Like, yes. Mm, yes. definitely. Yes. yes. I mean, it's just like the color red. So there's a lot of psychology to color, right? Mm-hmm. Red is often passion, fire, mm-hmm. boldness, you know, what we're not supposed to have. So a lot of times, like in movies, you'll see the Jezebel in red. Yes. You know, you're not supposed <laughs> to touch. And then, you know, when we think purity, we think white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so we put it in white. So red is just one of those colors that when you see it, it's like, bam, you know? Right, right. Absolutely. So we get red lips. Everybody go out and buy your red lips tonight. Right. Somebody's going out of state. It's going to be like the water in Memphis that we were out of. Everybody going to take the stores by storm and go get yeah, your red or, lipstick. Yeah, or take <laughs> by storm. Exactly. Go, yes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, tell me why I can get one of your red lips. I need a, I need <laughs> So we got everybody inbox Sheila tonight. C-I-D-Y okay. makeup tonight for your red lips. Thank you. Thank you. Sheila, what about you, though? How do you feel it uh, ties in? You know, we've all heard the the cliche, you look good, you feel good. Mm -hmm. And that is so true and so impactful. Just like you, Rachel, some days I don't feel like being the leader. I don't feel like being the entrepreneur. I don't feel like checking my emails. I don't feel like talking to my vendor. But then I have to realize no one's going to do it for me. Let me pull myself Mm -hmm. together. And let me read a couple scriptures because I'm sure there's going to be a word in there for me. But once I put on my clothes, I'll tell you this, true story. Today, when I went to work today, I looked nothing like this. For one, because I have the word mad, right? So anytime I get to put on my full face and dress up, you know, it makes me feel good. Even right now, I feel good. So there is a psychology to it. You know, I think it works hand in hand. Um, but what I do is I just have to talk to myself and say, look, girl, you're just in the moment. You have to think about down the road, mm-hmm. the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Some days I don't have confidence. Well, let me fix myself up. Let me think back to what, what I used to want for that I have now. Let me put on some city makeup. makeup. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, the Bible says, do not throw away your confidence for it will be richly rewarded. Mm-hmm. I never knew mm-hmm. the Bible spoke about confidence until mm-hmm. my, my godmother told me. It's in Hebrews. I can't remember the exact scripture, but I think maybe Hebrews 10, 29. Don't quote me on that. However, that even gave me power. And then in in thinking about confidence, God wants us to be confident in our gifts. He wants us to be confident in who he made us to be. So um, feel good, look good, get you some word in you, get a couple of drinks if you want to. Uh, (laughs) I'll be above you said. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Bold discussions on women in leadership. Absolutely yes. love it. Absolutely love it. So let's shift just a little bit. We're going to go back to makeup, but we're going to talk a little bit about leadership. So what has been your greatest success since you have been in the industry? I think it's good for, especially those who want to enter the industry. Like what's been your greatest success to date? And um, no success is too small because my success may look different. So I just want to know, what's your success that you consider? Um, One of Go ahead. Go ahead. So we read it. Tell it. Tell it. Tell it. Oh, tell it. Tell tell it. it. Say what I went. <laughs> Go ahead. I hate to mention any because I may leave something out, but I'll think of my biggest success um, was launching my own cosmetic line. Mm. Was actually before then getting my first small business grant. Mm. Three thousand dollars. That's all I qualified for. And that's not at all. That's a lot. That's a lot. lot yes, ma'am. <laughs> this was some years ago, and um, a company by the name of uh, Communities Unlimited gave me my first business grant. They're based in Arkansas. And from there, they blessed me to launch City Makeup. Now, City Makeup Cosmetics, I should say, um, has grown since then. In the last three, four years, it's unbelievable to the point where, you know, people from all over 
call me and make orders, even in in the coldest part of um, Canada, believe it or not. The package took maybe two months to get there, but she got it. But you know what I mean? So that was, launching my own cosmetic line is definitely the biggest success. Yeah. Because, I mean, everything starts with an idea. Mm -hmm. Microsoft, mm -hmm. Apple, you know, Amazon. Not, everything starts with one idea. And I had an idea in 2007 to become a business owner. Fast forward to 2021, own cosmetic line. Um, people are putting me on billboards that I didn't even pay for because they see the gift, they see the drive. So that's my business. See, business. You, you, you said Amazon and right there, up there with Amazon, CIDY makeup. C -I -D -Y and, makeup. And, and beyond, and yes. beyond. Yes, <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> All right. What about you, Rachel, Tricia? Um, you know... And, and we're talking about in terms of leadership, right? I mean, I think, okay. mm -hmm. or what are we just saying, period? Or what just, just in general, like in your industry, because you're already leaders, so we're already there. We know that you were leading to get there. But yeah, what's been your success? Uh, well, I guess, you know, my biggest shoot to date has been the Mona Lisa cover. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just, you know... <laughs> And it is so flat. everything. <laughs> so, it is so flat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently living that, but you know, that's been my greatest success. And um, I think one of the reasons why that shoot is so is a great success for me is not so much I was listening to Glam, which that's great, but um, you know, I had seven days to pull that shoot together and two mm -hmm. days 85% of the shoot was styled because of the relationships with vendors that you know, I had, and, um, you know, when I walked on set, I was very clear with my vision, my purpose with my assistant, and, you know, I was just, like, totally doing, like, my vision, like, what mm -hmm. I wanted to do, mm -hmm. and so, um, and even managing that inner shoot, different stuff, fires putting out, it's a mm -hmm. lot, mm -hmm. so to be able to do it in such a short time frame, during COVID, traveling, um, you know, I think it, it's amazing. Yeah, and I think, Absolutely. you know, sometimes we want stuff earlier, but, mm. you know, I think it took the years to have the relationships to pick it up. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's that patient factor. It's that faith factor. It's understanding that when it's time, it is time. It is um, time. And I'm sure we all on this call or even the audience, you know, when you think about things, oh, I sure wish I would make this kind of money or I wish this event would, you know, pop off for me. In due time, it always happens. And when it does, it blows your mind. Like when you're patient about it and not impatient, oh, it absolutely blows your mind. So I, I can appreciate that. And, you know, in your story, I heard, you know, what, what was important to me, especially when you asked the question, like, you know, in leadership, you talked about building relationships. You talked about, you know, managing, project managing the day of, you know, uh, being able to have a vision. Um, you know, Sheila, you're, you're talk, you talked about faith. You know, all of those things are so important when we talk about leadership and you're all doing it in your industry. So Trisha, we want to know yours. What, what can you tell us about your success, ma'am? So I believe in, you know, when you're leading effectively and coaching your teams um, or just individuals that when they see growth or promotion, for me, that's my biggest success. Um, mm -hmm. if, I, if you're under my leadership and you're not growing, then I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not fulfilling you in any kind of way. So basically pouring into my teams, pouring into even clients and seeing mm -hmm. them grow and move into doing, um, you know, I'll say one of my, like one of the ladies who used to work for me, she actually has started her own like bridal company and it's called Kiss and Makeup Memphis. Something that you know, it's very specialized. It's, it's very, um, you know, she, she really took the business, what she learned from me and grew her business into something great now. Um, to me, that's a success. Like, no, I, I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't, you know, sit down and write your business plan, but guess what? I helped to mold you. I helped to um, give you ideas and you took that and you ran with it and made it your own. To me, that's a success. I've had several individuals um, to work for me that have done that. And 
I'm, I'm forever grateful for that because they've in turn they've taught me and mm-hmm. I've learned you know oh this is something that you know I can you know do towards my you know uh, bridal business and this is you know like I said that's one of the biggest things big successes for my you know for my leadership I love it. I love it. I've always heard like your leadership is nothing if you aren't growing those that are that you're influencing. For sure. Um, so I absolutely can appreciate that. And some people um, aren't tuned in that way when it comes to leadership. But I think that's you being willing to be a servant leader, um, yeah. which is so, so key and so, so important. So I love the successes. So we're going to take a turn. I probably should have done this in other order, but let's talk about challenges. Yeah. Um, whether you're trying to be in this industry or you're just a leader, you are going to absolutely, or you're a leader in another industry, forgive me, uh, you're absolutely going to have challenges. It's the inevitable, um, you know, change is the inevitable. So what is maybe one challenge that you have encountered on your journey? And it could be in beauty and fashion, but you, but you've overcome it. Because we want to hear the overcome story so that we can inspire others to know how to avoid and or get through it when it comes up, if it comes up for them. So please share. So I will say, um, of course, for everybody, I think this is something that has been a challenge. Of course, it's COVID. Mm. Um, the pandemic <laughs> has really forced all of us to think outside of the box um, and figure out ways to still bring in revenue, still promote your businesses without physically being there, you know, or mm-hmm. without physically, you know, people coming to see you. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say doing virtual <clears throat> consultations with clients has really helped my business. Um, cl- even women who stay at home, but just like, I want to know how to make myself feel good. I may be here all day. I may not be seeing anyone. I may not, um, you know, have come in contact with the outside world, but I want to feel good. Um, and doing that, doing one-on-one Zoom calls with clients has really been beneficial. Um, and it, what I'm finding now is, you know, after the world, the world is kind of opening back up. Those same clients are reaching out and saying, hey, you know, we did this, you know, via Zoom, but now I want to do it in person. And now I want to do, like, do you, are you available to do that? Are you available to do my, my wedding was, you know, postponed to this year. Are you still available? Um, so those things are, you know, like, we just had to maneuver and think on our feet for COVID. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I will say that virtually, uh, that has been the best way to overcome all of this pandemic and really reach a different audience of people that we didn't know even existed, honestly, because sometimes people would like, a lot of times people won't come into a store or they won't come into like, walk into your physical business and say, hey, you know, I want to know how to put this on because a lot of times women, to be honest, they're overwhelmed with when you walk into a Sephora or uh, Ulta, they're like, what is going on here? To get that (laughs) one-on-one client um, interaction, has been like amazing to them because those people that don't want to do that, that this is opening up their their world. And it's like, you know what? I never thought that I could receive a service um, that's this so personalized and so personable. And that technology has really changed how we, uh, like I say, interact with clients and people every day. Love it, love it, love it. I heard agility, I heard strategy. Um, all, all key in uh, being able to navigate. And COVID, yeah, should be at the top of all of our right, it's time of <laughs> <laughs> when we talk about challenges and overcoming for sure. So what about you, Sheila, Rachel? Um, I would say a challenge that initially I faced and I had to really overcome this, um, expecting support from your family. <laughs> I'm sorry. We got a lot of laughs going. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me straighten my face. Because, because I felt, I feel, still feel like I'm doing this, not just for me. This mm-hmm. is for the legacy, this is for my nieces, my nephews, this is for the, the name, right? So I always thought that when I'm having an event or when I'm launching a, a cosmetic line out, I don't want my mom to watch this and say, I was there for you. My sister Gladys, I was there for you. True. Thank you. Absolutely. But I have more than two family members, truth be told. So just getting over the fact that actually, if none of your family members help you, somebody's going to see you and someone is going to value you and pour into you. 
And you may be up all night. You may not sleep good. I've learned that, done that many times. And so two days later, but that hard work, those crying tears, those sleepless nights, it's going to pay off because someone is going to notice you. Someone is going to say, I like what you're doing. You don't know I've been watching you. I get this a lot on Facebook, on Facebook in my inbox. I've been watching you for years. I just want to sow into you. I just want to, I want, I just want to bless your, all I have is $30, but here it is. Mm. Even that makes me feel like, Lord, you are still putting those people in place. You're mm -hmm. still, st my prayer is always go ahead of me and align those people who are part of your perfect plan for me. Mm. And that has worked out. When GoDaddy reached out to me through Communities Unlimited um, and did a whole documentary and included me in it, that was mind boggling. They didn't know anything about me, but the company who gave me the business loan said, we have another person I think you would like. And it was just amazing. So from there, like I said, billboards from We Are Memphis. We Are Memphis, that organization here in Memphis is such an amazing organization. They highlight artists here in Memphis. They highlight entrepreneurship here, here in Memphis. And they are so dedicated to us. So I'm, sometimes I'm like, we don't deserve them. But they are so amazing. Um, they went through, I don't know how many people to put us on billboards that we didn't have to pay for. Three and four billboards of, of me around the city. So God would set those people up. You just have to realize you cannot expect you from everybody. Yeah. So... Uh, like death that. not family. Yeah. And I say you have to be in it for the right reason. Sometimes we go in and we're looking for, um, you know, for the family to give us that, that stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're truly in it for the purpose and the passion as to why you got started, because you think it's a gift that the world needs to see, uh, yeah. and the world needs to partake in, it makes it easier to be okay with, you know, mm -hmm where the support may not come from exactly. and just embrace where the support is coming. So I love that. And that was very transparent. So I can appreciate that bold <laughs> discussion. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what about you, Rachel? Um, I think for me, I, you know, I myself have been my biggest <laughs> struggle. Mm -hmm. mm. I like that. Now that, that's a word. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. You know, for a while I was like, Making I always needed like mentorship work because I need somebody to show me and I need somebody to show me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this last year, God was like, I need you to work from what you see in here. It's not in nobody else, with nobody else. It's all here. And this year, I've been building my team. You know what I'm saying? And we're mm -hmm. coming up with my... Like just that real, real brand identity that's really built you creating things, right? you know, doing things and stuff like that. And so trusting my, it's when I trust myself that I win. <sighs> you know, so when I walked in that shoot of Mona Lichi, I was like five seconds, I was like, woo, now hold on now. Then some just said, no, nah, I'm about to do me. Right. <laughs> and that was the last thought I had, because it's not that the negative thoughts don't come. It's right. just, can we shoot them down quicker? You know, right. that's what I like to say. My response time gets so much quicker being like, mm -hmm. nah, girl. So I was like, nah, girl, you got this. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's when I do me that I win. And I told myself that. I said, you win when you do yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I did my bit, I did what I want. The work comes out and then boom. So I've been my biggest obstacle. I think a lot. I overthink. I'm type A. Um... You know, it was a lot for me to switch careers with people, you know, girl, you talk about support. <laughs> people thought I was a fool. Dude. Right. A mm -hmm. fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah. That's definitely a step. It's a it's a huge switch, so I get it. But you understood where you were supposed to be headed. I thought I had enough to keep going. Mm -hmm. you know? Because it was that, like she, she was saying, days you don't want to, but she, but God gives you at every turn, He gives you just enough. Whether like she was said, a comment from somebody, a thirty dollar mm -hmm. check, or whatever mm -hmm. that tells you, you keep your butt going down this road. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's right. what I did. And I and I, I thank God for the ability. And I got stronger to listen to myself. So mm -hmm. I really, not to be like, I'm my biggest obstacle, but for real, like <laughs> me, my mind, my mind said that was the biggest obstacle. And now that I'm overcoming that, it's limitless. Manifest, like Sheila said, everything starts with a thought. Mm -hmm. Sky's yeah. the limit. I yeah. want to say my biggest success, I ain't seen it. 
Because that's it. That's you it. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's, I that's love it. Stuff. I love it. You know? But I can appreciate that because so many people talk themselves out of things because of the the lack of the trust and understanding <laughs> or that self awareness that I talked about. You know, yeah. truly being self aware of what their gifts are and how they're supposed to be moving forward, regardless of the barriers that. Are perceived because a lot of times it's a perceived it's really not there it's a mirage of a barrier that we may create for ourselves so i love you sharing that transparent moment because a lot of us it, it's a very common thought oh, um, and so i'm glad they need to hear that and we're all talked out of it and i think it's like building a muscle right so like mm -hmm. i you know thought was thinking i wanted to leave my leave law i got into counseling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's traumatic. I mean, that can be deemed as traumatic. Yeah, it can. can. Wrong mode. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. What right. I'm, saying is, I'm saying that to say all of this stuff is practice and building muscle. Mm -hmm. Get mm -hmm. with somebody to help you develop the tools that self talk, self care, mm -hmm. and you become better at using it. And your tools get sharper and stronger. And before you know it, you out here hosting. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Started makeup lines. Right, yeah. right, you know what I'm right. Saying? You out here. Yeah. You know? Get new clients, all yeah. of that. Yeah. It's amazing what is available to us if we just give ourselves the room, space, and freedom in our mind to be mm. it. You know what I'm saying? To think it. So, yeah. And I'm I love say, it. I'm going to say to your point, Rachel, sometimes we talk ourselves out of certain situations or our biggest um, goals because we don't have any evidence around us of it. Mm. We don't having grown up around it i knew no one in my family father's side or mother's side who had mm -hmm. a business so mm -hmm. it was all foreign then myself decided to oh i'm going to become an inventor i'm going to create something for the makeup industry that right there was another yeah are you serious girl you yeah a person <laughs> you what do you know about invention nothing <laughs> And then a lot of times people that are in the, that are not in the arts don't think that, they're like, oh, that's not going to make you any money. That's, mm. you know, and so it always, you know, so Sheila, I totally understand where yeah. you're coming from because it's like, no, this is my passion, but it's also something, a stream of revenue for me as well. But some people, they don't see that. They're like, oh, she's over there playing and make up. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you know she over there playing yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's just lack of exposure right, and, and the, right, and the sure. gift in it all the gift in it all is that you get to become the awareness for them you get to become the exposure for right. them so that's the responsibility that you also get to get to take on and it's a good responsibility yeah. somewhat of a pressure i'm sure yeah. but mm -hmm. it's a great responsibility to be able to then expose those who were the naysayers or who just had no clue you know right. or who just don't get it you know so i love that i love that so let's run into um everyone every woman let me say that every woman has a boudoir right um, you know, they have a private place that they like to prepare themselves in the morning. You know, some people, it takes, some women, it takes us five minutes. Some women, it may take us 40. Some, I know a little longer than that, but hey, whatever it is, you have a boudoir. And in that, you've got your clothing, you've got your facial and hair tools, your accessories. So I just want you all to share with the, um, we'll say the ladies tonight, men, if you're tuning in, make sure you take the notes for your wives and your girlfriends. Right. Um, but what are two things you recommend for any woman to have in their boudoir? So if it's fashion, what is it that they need to make sure they have? If it's makeup, you know, what are two things that are like some winning items to make sure you have to help with their success, to help with their confidence, and ultimately help with effective leadership? So I will say every morning when I get dressed, when I get ready to go, I have to have, and I don't know if you ladies have heard of this, uh, my bubble bistro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard of her? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> no, girl, <laughs> me, girl, let me know what it is. So bubble bistro is like uh, a natural uh, handmade, like body scrubs, lotions, oils. She uh, lives in Memphis. Her name is Andrea. I have to have it. Like, it's like when I go to bed, I got to put my body butter on. When I wake up, I got to put my oil on. Okay. I'll be, be slipping and sliding around, <laughs> but, I gotta, <laughs> but I gotta have it. I will say for sure, definitely. And you guys know we talked earlier before jumping on the call. Another thing um, that I have to have 
is my red lipstick. Um, I recently I have started to work out. I've lost forty pounds. Oh, and oh, oh, yeah. 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 Let me tell y'all. I'm yeah. in my- <laughs> <laughs> when I am working out, let me tell y'all, I'm gonna have my red lipstick on. And it, it's so funny because the ladies at the gym they used to be like, "What is she like? Why does she have red lip? Like, why does she have lipstick on?" And I'm like, "Y'all, like it makes me work out harder. Like I mm-hmm. feel pretty. I look good." Mm-hmm. And so every Monday we have red lipstick Monday. So not only do I wear the red lipstick, all the ladies in the gym wear the red lipstick. Oh, I love and the it. gym that I attend is uh, fit with Tawana. Um, so. Yeah, so it's an all ladies gym, and I absolutely love it. But those are two things you gotta have: your Bubble Bee Show and your red lipstick. Whatever your favorite one is, you gotta have it all. And I, and I have heard or I've seen the Bubble Bistro has an army of oh, women yes. out there that oh, must yes. have her product. <laughs> yes, you got you got. I mean, yes, you have to. And it's something too. What'd you say? You gonna want to send me a link or something? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can definitely send you something. Yeah, we'll we'll do that. We'll put it in the po- in the post too, so people. Yes, can see you it. gotta have it. You have to have it. Yeah, that's. But like I said, she makes an array of of a product, so not just body, like hair care, face, all of it. So whatever hand sanitizers, people, of course, because I'm in people's face all day and I'm doing their makeup, I use the hand sanitizer. So they always ask, "What's in your head? Like, what is it? What's your perfume?" I'm like, "It's I actually." My hand sanitizer, but she, you know, is you gotta have it every day. Got to. Bubble Bistro Red Lip. What else are we putting in our boudoir? What else do we have? Rachel, okay. let's go. What do you have? So I like, you know, a good robe. You know, some with a little flow. Mm. You know? mm. I, I think I'm I'm into that. Like people on that have a little tail and just a little, you know, nothing form fitting that you can just you know, flow around, like, I'm in this top, so I just feel like I'm doing something I'm not, but, you know what I'm saying, so I love things with flow, um, and perfume, I think mm. you put a good robe on, and you smell good, child, you think, it you, makes a difference, you know, it makes a difference, so, <laughs> I'm putting in there a little flow, whether it be, you know, a kimono, or a robe, and uh mm-hmm. perfume, love it, love it, okay, love it. so, hold on, let me see, we got Bubba Bistro, Red Lip, Anything flowy, and I, I you can't see it, but my dress is flowing tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and perfume. All yeah. right, all right. What you got, Sheila? What are we adding? Okay. Well, in the morning time, I told you I only I only do my makeup from here up because <laughs> I'm not wasting my makeup. So when I come home, I look like like I was I don't know tan with just makeup on. So I'll tell you all. I'll show you all. Every day, I gotta have City Makeups United Nations. Palette, new palette, yeah, color yeah. or bold every day. Um, and another thing, okay, that's one. I have to have my wing liner. Ooh, my okay. wing liner. And I've taught this in my Key to the City makeup workshops. And it's an, it is an art to getting that perfect wing. However, I got to have it. Um, one more thing. I, oh, perfume. I, I'm starting to become addicted to designer perfumes. Um I may need counseling, but um, I have it. So when I go in my closet, I'm like, which one do I want? You know, so oh, wow. <laughs> wing liner, that wing, and of course, eyeshadow from City. And I wouldn't have guessed the wing liner, but I'm definitely not a master of it. So I probably need to tune in to the next class. Yeah. I'm not, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not even going to show you mine now. So. <laughs> But we've got the perfume twice. We've got the red lip. <laughs> Bubble Bistro. Oh, I hope she comes back on. It looks like she kind of disconnected, but hopefully she'll join us in a moment. Um, and then you've got your wing liner and your red lip. Mm-hmm. So uh, one of the next questions I wanted to ask, um, if you had a second life after oh. this one, obviously after this one, who would you want to come back as in your respective industry? Oh. <laughs> In, oh, okay. I'll go. Okay. I would like to come back as, in my perspective, industry. I want to say my girl, Pat McGrath, because Pat McGrath okay. is a billionaire. Pat McGrath is playing the galaxy, <laughs> ice shadows, and, and everything. Pat McGrath. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Love it, love it, Pat. All right. And you, Rachel? Okay, I know this is going to be... She's in, well, she's in my industry. Yeah. Okay. So ever since I was a kid, I've wanted to be like 
the Jessica Simpson of fashion. So oh, wow. like, my own fashion line. Okay. Yes. Right uh, back. Of stuff. Yeah. So she's killing when it. I was a kid. I was like, you know, I'm trying to put my stamp on. The we need game. Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> That is too funny. Jessica's killing it. I wouldn't have guessed Jessica, but she is killing it. If I can get my feet, well, I can get my feet in her shoes. It's the wearing of them that I have a little issue with. Oh, just being so able to wear them all day. Yeah, we're not here to debate quality, but <laughs> what, <laughs> what I, she was one of the first mm -hmm. to have a line okay. of her own that went from shoes, wardrobe, home. Mm. I mean, Okay. She was one of the first, like, really celeb fashion mm -hmm. lines to really do mm -hmm. it. And, okay. I mean, she's still here. I mean, oh, wow. you Are know, you whether, and, and, like, that's a whole conversation, right? Whether we as older in our uh, older women like in our mm -hmm. 30s 40s are right. we and Justin Simpson maybe not right. maybe that was a young time but mm -hmm. they still getting them so <laughs> I got Jessica's shoes I'm yeah. over okay <laughs> yeah. I had a get me yesterday <laughs> okay so you can do it okay and I got a pair in there I got a couple pair let me be clear I have a few pair so yeah but, but, she, but definitely to be able to expand like that that's a great yeah, great like um, it, model so and, to speak. and to where you know you can live a life you know she came on the view like months ago when mm. you see Jessica Simpson right <laughs> she's out there with her family mm. you, you mm. know what I'm saying so yep. yeah. good deal good deal so um I guess we're coming to a close and I always believe in being on time. So what's anything else you all want to share with the audience that maybe we hadn't talked about, be it beauty, fashion, tying it into leadership, um, just any nugget that the ladies or whoever's watching can walk away with and really integrate mm -hmm. into their journey? I would say do not compare yourself to anybody. Mm. You know, not even Je my girl, Jessica Simpson. She can be my inspiration maybe for somebody or Pat McGrath, but yeah. you know, some, some nights I used to be up all night going through Pat McGrath's Instagram, scrolling. Oh, I like the way her palette looks. Oh, mine doesn't look like that. Yeah. That drive you banana. So yeah. don't care because you never yeah. know. You may, you may not have made it through what Pat made it through to get to where she's at. Listen. So that's probably why you're on the path you're on. So Listen. don't compare. Don't compare. I love it. To your gift that God gave you. And um, just stand in that and, and use what's in your hand. Like you were saying, you know, God told you what's in your head. Yeah. You know, I, I always say head, hands, use what's in your hands and um, honor God with that. I love honor. it. And so we're going we're gonna to step back for a minute because we have to hear Trisha's answer to this one. So we didn't get oh, far. Oh, and oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. glad you got back on. No, no, it's technology, baby. Technology, no, anything can happen. <laughs> We're going we're gonna to keep it moving. So the question was, if you could come back in a second life, who would you come back as? But it has to be somebody in your industry. Oh. <laughs> they did the same thing. <laughs> oh, I, they did the I same know, thing. I know, I know. Come on. I would come back. I would come back as Pat McGrath. We got two Pats. We got two Pats. Sheila came oh, back really? and said two. <laughs> That would be two pants, honey. Two pants. Yes. I love it. Just for the audience, this was not scripted. I literally have two pants on the call. I didn't know I was gonna have yes. two pants. I love it. I love it. I love it. This says a lot about Pat McGrath. Well, I didn't even hear I could, I didn't even hear her response. So no, I right, right. Right, right. No, I'm just being silly. But yeah, that's good deal. Good deal. So why why for you? Why Pat for you? So Pat, first of all, she is uh, powerhouse in the makeup industry, in the fashion industry. And she's really breaking a lot of barriers with uh, just color in makeup. Mm -hmm. So offering selections that brands don't offer um, mm -hmm. has been amazing. I mean, like from her concealer to her foundation colors, mm -hmm. to her eyeshadow palettes, um, to her different lip textures. So um, 
of course, like I said, you know, I love lipstick, but she has a matte trance formula that is almost like um, the formula is it's matte, but it's a softer matte. So when you put it on, it doesn't make your lips really dry. Like if you have, if you've ever tried like a, a Ruby Woo lipstick and it's, you know, really pretty and red, but it can be drying on the lips. Her mattes give that same look without being overly drying. And I absolutely love that formula um, that she's provided. I love her, her just, I love everything about her brand. Like it, I don't have anything that I don't like. Now I will say this, you guys, I am like a makeup, like not a hoarder, but collector. Um, and that's just one of the things that she has brought something in my collection that I don't have, that I haven't seen, that no one has ever made. So for me, Pat McGrath is just innovative. She's just a trailblazer and she's just genius. So I would love to come back as Pat. Yes, yeah. love it, love it. So we're going to go forward. We uh, heard Sheila, she, we, the next question we're asking uh, Trish is just one thing you want to leave with the audience. Um, just, you know, whatever nugget you think is important for your audience to walk away with. And so we're moved to Rachel. So Rachel, what what what's your thing that we need to walk away and really um, hone in on? Bet on yourself. You know, just bet on yourself. Um, you know, that's it. Like <laughs> you want that's something, it. go out and get it. Um, I wish I had it in a cuter way, but yeah, yeah bet like, on yourself. Uh, and also be original as you can. Like. You 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 are more creative than you realize. So um, like like Sheila was saying, don't worry about copying. You know, trying to be like mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. Be yourself because that's what people are gonna buy into is you mm -hmm. and whatever you're doing. So yep. you know, bet on yourself and just do it. Love it, love it. That authenticity. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Trish? So one thing I'll leave with you guys is that of course. Um, like I said, I have a social work background and I truly believe that beauty starts from the inside. Um, so getting your heart right, getting your mind right will be reflected on your outside. Um, creating a peaceful space in your home, um, in your marriage with your kids, uh, will then pour over to your professional life. Right. Um, and to me, when my life is harmonious, that's beautiful to me. That's beauty. Um, that is uh, what I strive to do. And what I think es essentially everyone is striving to do is create peace and finding that beauty within. So that's why I leave, you know, just make sure you find your beauty from within. Oh, okay. And everything else will be reflected. Y'all have spoken some words tonight. Absolutely. Y'all hadn't seen me, but I'm, I've taken plenty of notes for myself. Just so <laughs> I know, you know I've been writing notes too. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to be holding my makeup brush, but I've been holding my pen. Yes. Uh, because you all have truly offered up a lot of good information. And, you know, we talk about beauty and we talk about fashion, but to me, I feel like, you know, it, it was evident that we talked about how it's tied into the way we're going to be effective leaders. You all are doing it each and every day. And I just loved hearing your stories, your journeys. Um, and like I said, the path forward, I can't wait to watch it for each and every one of you because it's going to be absolutely amazing. So because of that, and you all have so much good, th so many good things going on, I want to make sure that the audience can find you one way or another. How can they connect with you? What's the next big initiative? Um, so if you all can share maybe your handles and I'll put it in the post later, but um, how can people contact you or what should we be looking out for, for, for you? Sorry. So like I said, I'm venturing into bridal freelance work and um, you can find me Trisha Lynn Artistry on Facebook. You can also find me Trisha Lynn uh, MUA on Instagram. And my name is spelled T-R-I-C-I-A, Lynn L-Y-N-N. -N. So you'll be able to find me. There's no one like that name with that name with me. So it'd be easy to find. Awesome, awesome. All right. Um, you can find me on all social media social media platforms on Facebook. I'm Sheila Guerrero. On Instagram, I am Sheila S F X M U A special effects makeup artist. On Twitter, I am City Makeup, C-I-D-Y Makeup. Um, or you can go to my website, www.citymakeup.com. If you would like to get the key to the city, um, I would like to say this. Um, city Makeup Cosmetics not only have this makeup, whatever, right? 
We also have a geography piece, a learning element to City Makeup Cosmetics. So all of our lipsticks are named after various cities around the world. Some I would like to go to, some I've gone to, and some I know I'm going to go to, right? So um, whenever you buy, like tonight, I'm wearing Paris, France. If you buy Paris, France, you'll get a postcard with a little QR code uh -huh. from smartphone. It tells you all about Paris, France. So I it has it. a element to it, um, as well as um, the beauty element. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yes. Yeah, so we got bridal makeup. We've got CIDY educational series we need to sign up for. What, what are we looking for for you, Rachel? Yeah. So I'm coming out with more classes. Um, my class for this one already sold out. So we'll Hold be out. Sorry. <laughs> <Next one. laughs> About, uh, top, <laughs> top finds under uh, $100. Everyone should have in their closet. Um, next, um, Month, I'm gonna be doing more in depth into the closet cleanse. I'm gonna call it like closet therapy or something like that. Mm, mm. Um, but yeah, um, rachelsojo.com um, at Golden Style Consulting is my business. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook, um, rachelsojo.com, and then just Rachel Sojourner. Sojourner is spelled S O J O U R N E R. I know that's wrong, <laughs> but just do the S O J O, you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> love it love it and i have had the honor of taking these um fashion i call them get your life classes <laughs> um because she offers up so much good information so you can figure it all out you know so you can be together and um yeah i'm gonna be looking for the cleansing class um willingly and reluctantly at the same time i know i'm gonna right? have to work <laughs> i'm gonna have awesome to work <laughs> um, yeah that's how, like awesome, i awesome. do it so thank you all for sharing that. You all make sure you connect with these ladies. Um, it was, I'm just going to say, I don't, I don't know if it was just me, but it was nothing for me to just reach out to them in an inbox. I, I slid some of them a DM and, um, you know, hey, I need you to come on. I need, I, I love your voice. I love what you're doing. I want you to come on. And so I want you all to definitely reach out. And if nothing else, just follow them and see what's going on and support them uh, near and far wherever you are, because they are doing amazing things. So I don't know about you all, but I am ready to uh, sharpen my beauty and fashion toolbox tonight. Um, it has been refreshing. It has been amazing. Uh, each of you have been amazing, and I could not be more grateful for you agreeing to come on. So um, thank you again. Viewers, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, be sure to connect with the ladies. In the meantime, because now I got to do my plug. If you enjoyed tonight, I need you to connect with the Greater You Leadership Series for more great content. We'll be back March 11th with another panel of amazing women, leaders who are not just lip service. They are out here in these streets doing exactly what it is they say they are doing. And they are just truly empowering, uh, not just women, but the uh, communities and the environments that they touch each and every day. So go to my website. You can subscribe. The website is www.thegreateryouleadership.com. You can find me again here on Facebook, uh, as well as on Instagram under The Greater You Leadership. Um, if you want to catch the replay of this, check out YouTube, check out the website. I'm also on LinkedIn. If anybody else wants to uh, find us on LinkedIn, if you want to do a more professional approach, we can do that too. But um, this has been great. Thank you to each of you. I really, I can say this. I love y'all. Thank y'all for coming on. And uh, I look forward to uh, what's next for each of you. Thank you, audience. Y'all have been great. I can't wait to go back and read the comments. <laughs> um, but everyone have an amazing, fabulous, fabulous night. It's fine.